I'm sure you've heard a lot of people complain about Mr. Game & Watch, saying he's broken and they just hate him. But you don't know exactly why that is. Don't worry, I'll explain it to you so you can hate on him too. I'm not going to cover everything about the character, but just some of the key traits he has that makes him a great character. One of the first things you probably hear people mention when talking about Game Launch is his up B. This move is the best out of shield option in the game for three reasons. Reason 1. It's tied for the fastest out of shield option in the game. Game & Watch's up B comes out on frame 3, which is incredibly fast. If someone had an aerial that came out on frame 1, the fastest possible attack you can have, up B would still be a faster out of shield option because you need 3 additional frames to jump. There are very few characters in the game that have an attack that's minus 2 or safer on shield, which means it's very likely if you touch Game & Watch's shield, he'll be able to punish you with his up B. The only option some characters have is to not touch his shield at all, or space their attack so he's unable to punish them with his up B. Reason 2. The hitboxes on up B are pretty big. There are two hitboxes that come out, one on each side of him, making it impossible to cross him up. The hitbox goes out slightly further than his shield, so your spacing has to be on point to not be punished, or you need to make sure you have a disjoint attack that allows you to pressure from a distance. Reason 3. If Game Watch punishes you with up B, he puts you in a juggle situation where he can potentially get an additional follow up. Up B puts you under Game Watch, the character with one of the strongest juggling tools in the game. Game Watch is one of the few characters that doesn't go into freefall after using his up B, which gives him access to all of his aerials after using it. You can DI the attack, making it harder for him to get a follow up, but you're still put in a fairly bad spot and it's possible for Game Watch to read your next move and give you more damage. If Game Watch hits you with an up B and gets a follow up from it, he can potentially get about 20 plus percent off of one out of shield punish. Even if you successfully bait out an up B, he can mix up his landing with an air dodge or down air. If the opponent is at a high percent, down air can potentially kill. It is possible to punish him before he can even attempt to mix up his landings by jumping into him with an aerial. But you have to quickly react to his up B and have a character fast enough to reach him with an attack. This, in my opinion, is Game & Watch's strongest tool and can single-handedly sway matchups into his advantage. Not being able to touch an opponent's shield is frustrating to a lot of people because it makes what is usually a favorable position an unfavorable one, which can lead to you being in a worse spot. Outside of its shield usage, it's really strong for getting out of combos since the hitbox is as fast as his air dodge, and there's also invulnerability frames on it. For recovery move, I say it's pretty solid since it goes a great distance and you're able to attack an air dodge out of it. One big flaw I'd say is that it's one of the easier recoveries to two frame or even hit before he grabs the edge. Now let's talk about Game & Watch's juggling. Game & Watch's strongest juggling tool in my opinion is his neutral air. It comes out on frame 7 which isn't super fast but the hitbox is incredibly disjointed. If space I don't think there's a single character that has an attack that can beat it if he's below them. The hitbox is interesting because it starts above Game & Watch and then part of the hitboxes go to the sides while still having a hitbox above him. I wouldn't say his neutral air is an amazing approaching option because again, it starts above him, but it's a strong anti-airing option and if you do land the attack, it leads into another neutral air or up air depending on the percent. Even if the opponent shields it, the attack is surprisingly safe on shield. Up air is an amazing juggling option Game & Watch has. Game & Watch shoots out a projectile directly above him that slowly moves up higher until it disappears. It doesn't have much knockback so it almost never kills. If the opponent is hit by it, they will be sent slightly higher which could potentially lead to Game & Watch landing another up air or trying to catch their landing. What makes this attack so good is that in certain situations, Game & Watch can do a falling or landing up air to put the hitbox out and if the opponent tries to avoid it, they either air dodge into Game & Watch where he can catch their landings with an attack or force them to burn their double jump and still chase them in the air. 
It is considered a projectile, so you can reflect it if your character has that option. Game & Watch's down throw is his best move out of grab and can lead into his up air or neutral air. This combo is guaranteed regardless of how the opponent DIs and is able to work until about low to mid percent on most characters. After that, the best follow up he can get out of down throw is up B. So even on the ground, Game & Watch has a very strong option to put the opponent in a juggle situation. His standing grab isn't amazing, but for some reason his dash grab has amazing range, making it easier for him to chase down opponents and catch landings with it. Also his down throw can kill at about 200% or lower depending on rage, weight, and DI. Something else to note about his juggling tools is that they can all combo into his side B, which has the possibility to be a super strong kill move that can kill at around 20%, sometimes even zero depending on the amount of rage Game Watch has and how close to the blast zone you are when it hits. Overall his juggling is amazing because his three strongest juggling tools can kind of loop into itself or potentially put the opponent off stage and set up for kills. Speaking of kills, Game & Watch has some really strong kill moves and setups. He also has one of the slowest up smashes in the game, which is kind of surprising because a lot of people get hit by it and it doesn't have much range compared to other characters with slower smash attacks. But believe me, it is a deceptively good move. The hitbox for the attack is the entire area of where he swung his head instead of just being where his head currently is, and when the attack is out, Game & Watch is completely invincible. This means challenging the attack is pointless since you won't do anything to him. So you have to wait for the hitbox to end. The only problem is that up smash has very little in lag, so if your timing is slightly off, you'll miss your punish and most likely get punished yourself. Because of this, it's a scary move to challenge and is also an amazing tool to cover landings. His downbeat can reflect physical projectiles and also absorb energy based ones. If he absorbs 3 attacks, he can use his downbeat as an attack. Depending on how strong the projectiles he absorbed was, he can have a super weak attack or a one hit kill move. The scary thing about this is that the attack comes out on frame 2 and he's completely invulnerable while the hitbox is out. I'd argue that Game Watch has the best down smash in the game. The sweet spot of the move can bury a grounded opponent and lead into an additional smash attack at higher percents. Even if you don't kill with it, the down smash plus additional follow up you get can do about 30 to 40%. If the opponent is in the air, the sweet spot will be a very strong vertical kill move. The sour spot sends the opponent outward and can also kill, but isn't nearly as strong. Like up smash, it's a very good option for covering landings and is really good at 2 framing since it can hit below the edge and has an active hitbox for a decent number of frames. Off stage, Game & Watch has some really strong edge guarding and 2 framing tools. Dash attack is one of the easiest attacks in the game to 2 frame with because of how active the hitbox is. It puts the opponent in a position where Game & Watch can chase him off stage and land a back air, which is a pretty strong kill move off stage. You can potentially string back airs together off stage and finish the combo with an up B for an early kill. If the opponent tries to go low, Game & Watch can get them with the down air. If the opponent gets hit with the beginning of the attack, they will get spiked and if they get hit with the later part, they will be sent upward. The later hit is pretty strong and can lead into an detectable stage spike at higher percents. It's a disjointed attack, so it's a really good move to use for 2 framing the opponent if you're in the air or off stage. His neutral beat is not only a strong 2 framing move, but also an amazing edge trapping tool. Not many people know this, but you can actually control the distance the projectile goes. The different ranges can cover all the opponent's get up options if spaced right. If you end the move at the right time, you can get a fall up while the opponent is still getting hit by the projectiles. You can even combo it into his 4 tilt, which is a kill move. Something else I want to talk about because I know I'm going to get asked about this is his forward air. It's a pretty interesting move and can do a lot for the character if you know how to set up into it. The bomb he throws automatically explodes after a certain number of frames or will explode if it touches the ground. It can kill so it's really good for air dodge reads and is his safest move on shield if done right. 
You can destroy the bomb without it exploding by simply hitting it. So this move is only good if the opponent is using a defensive option or doesn't have enough time to hit the bomb before it explodes. So, I gave you a bunch of reasons to complain about Game & Watch, but I think it's only fair that I talk about his flaws. The character is super light, being tied for third lightest in the game with Squirtle. So it doesn't take much to take his stock. I'd say Game Watch's neutral isn't that good. His two safest aerials can be challenged before the hitbox reaches you, and his back air and down air are pretty easy to whiff punish and unsafe on shield. His dash attack is fast, but it's also pretty unsafe on shield. A lot of his kills come from landing a smash attack or edge guarding, so as long as you can make it hard for him to do those two things to you, he will usually struggle to kill. Overall, Game Watch is still an amazing character. His strengths allow him to get a considerable advantage against characters who don't have strong options against it. His moveset makes it very easy to loop into the same moves, and to many, turns him into a repetitive flowchart that a lot of people just get frustrated seeing. And that's it. What did you think of the video? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like, and if you really liked it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.